this particular innovation is looking at um, modular power systems. If you look at an individual, I would say element that could be an inductor, it could be a capacitor, it could be a resistor, it could be a transistor device. These individual devices could be rated for a couple of hundred volts, couple of hundred amperes, but we are looking at the overall system. It is rated for megawatts and uh, hundreds of kilovolts, assembling all these components to meet the requirements that are very high voltage and high power. How do we do that? We do that using modular power converters. We would highlight that uh, the the cost as well as the size of these passive components are reduced to the extent that now probably it will be like one tenth of the conventional technology. Our electric grid itself um, is fed by solar panels or wind farms or has energy storage elements in the form of battery energy storage elements. So there are all these exciting design challenges that are coming about. Basically, there is a need for technology to shift power generated by renewables over very long distances between time zones or underwater. And the technology to address these problems from a, from a system level point of view is so-called high voltage DC transmission. We need power converters to basically turn AC into DC at very high voltage. The output from the solar panels uh, is, is a DC power, so we have that as DC. But, but uh, to use that, uh, we need to convert it to AC. Then the wind turbine power output from the wind turbine, inherently it's AC, but at different frequencies. So we uh, need to convert that frequency uh, to, to 60 hertz. For both of these, kind of the, the size and, and bulk of these of these power electronic components are, are problematic. I mean, especially you can imagine offshore, you have to put like, you know, a big steel platform into the sea. The, the bigger you make this, the more expensive it gets. There is a lot of work in, in power electronics that is going after that same goal, but they're reducing the cost through basically changes to the power electronics that make them kind of worse as seen from the grid, right? And so that's really what we wanted to avoid here. There are different ways to arrange these, like the same uh, basic components, but different way to arrange this and different way to control how, how the voltages or the currents of, uh, around these components would look like. So that is the basic topology. With this active power decoupling technique, we are changing the topology with, uh, with the goal of uh, improving the circuit. So we build small, tiny modules or small, tiny power converters, and we connect them in series and or in parallel to arrive at a system that is modular by design. This MMC converter transfers, uh, converts AC to DC or DC to AC, depending on where is the source and where is the load. And in those cases, we need to connect these MMCs and each of these MMCs, as the name suggests, like they are modular blocks. And we are taking uh, each of those modules uh, into consideration and uh, proposing uh, a, an alternate circuit to improve the performance. If you look at the overall picture, it is actually, uh, it consists of all these tiny little blocks that can provide functionality of very high power density, of very high efficiency, of high fault tolerance. Overall, the size of the, of the converter uh, reduces by almost 10 times, and or even more, depending on how good we are optimizing the, the, these components. So at this point, I'm working with my group to um, scale down a converter and working uh, on designing that uh, lab scale prototype. Once we have the prototype, we can demonstrate that at a, at a lower uh, power level. The typical way to, to go about this is to you know, shoot for like a prototype in the 10, 20 megawatt range. So something that's, you know, still, it's kind of beyond the capabilities of, of you know, of universities, but um, it's, it's still something that's fairly manageable that can be done in a few years. And then the way this industry works is that then the next big step up is typically a deployment with the first customer. And then uh, actually getting this out in the real world, collaborating with um, you know, original equipment manufacturers or OEMs who would potentially buy this idea of looking at uh, okay, how can we make the circuit better by design and then taking it out there and actually implementing it uh, in the field. Hi, I'm Michael Carey, Licensing Manager with Wharf. If you like what you heard and want more information, use the information on the screen or in the description below to get in touch with us. 
And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos from Worf.